Well, good evening, everybody. It's good to be here. We did a message this morning, and I could not get it to transfer to YouTube, and the only way to get it on YouTube is to redo the message. Uh, this morning, I went live on uh, Facebook, and I couldn't get it to transfer over where I could share it to YouTube. So uh, this message, no doubt, is going to be maybe a little bit different than the one that is on the Facebook account. But anyway, it's the same message. Um, I was reading my Bible this morning in the book of Titus. Paul was the writer to young Titus here. Um, Paul was saying words to him about uh, religion, about the office of a bishop, um, the different duties of the church as far as the leadership of the church and everything. And this man, Paul, was actually speaking to Titus. He had been speaking to Timothy, and he had wrote into the book of Romans and Corinthians and uh, Galatians, Ephesians, Colossians, and then the the books of Timothy, the Thessalonians. Uh, he pretty much was telling Timothy the same thing that he's telling Titus here, and there was some things that I had pointed out, and I hope that my mind can remember these in order to do justice to this message here. But as it gets on down near the end of chapter 2, there was two verses that I was looking at. And the two verses I was looking at is verse 13 and 14 of Titus chapter number 2. I'm going to read them uh, verbatim real quick, and then we'll go back and talk about these verses. It says, looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Now, let me just stop right there on that one verse, and let's talk about it. He's referring to Titus as someone that needs to know this pertinent information. There's a lot of information here that Paul was telling uh, Titus here, and he's getting him excited when he goes and says, looking for that blessed hope. It's one thing to have a hope. It's another thing to have a blessed hope. A blessed hope is an assurity of salvation and a surety that we're going to see the Lord one day. Uh, I made a comment this morning how that Titus has already passed away. Uh, Timothy has already passed away. Paul has already passed away. And their bones is laying somewhere in the earth. I don't know where um, Paul is buried at. Uh, some people might say he's buried in Rome, and I don't know that. I mean, I don't know that anybody really knows that. It's been a long, many, many years, so we don't know. I don't know if anyone knows where Titus is. Or for that matter, Timothy, we don't know where he is. But Paul was telling this man, Titus, looking for that blessed hope. Well, that hope that is a blessed hope is a hope that only Jesus can give. Only Jesus can give that blessed hope. The hope that we know in salvation when someone comes to know the Lord Jesus as their Savior and Lord. That is considered to be the blessed hope. But see, he goes on to say, and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. You notice that it used the word our. 
he was, Paul was referring to Timothy, or not Timothy, Titus, in this writing here. So he uses the word our, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Well, if you've been born again today, you have that same hope that Titus had. You have that same hope that Timothy had. You have that same hope that Paul had. And what Paul was telling Titus could very well be the same thing that he means in telling you and I today. They're all dead and they're all gone. The ones that are dead, the ones that have died in our lifetime are dead and gone. But here's the thing. Here's the positive thing about that. Paul's bones, as I said before, is laying somewhere. Titus is laying somewhere. Timothy is laying somewhere. But they have been given that promise of that blessed hope. They're in that blessed hope today because they are with the Lord in heaven. Now, they're not in their earthly glorified body yet. Christ hasn't come to give everybody that glorified body yet. Well, that's what the church is waiting on now is that glorified body that's going to come to the people of God, to the ones who believe in him, the ones who trust in him. And so the Lord is going to give this blessed hope to people that believe in him. And see, Paul is with the Lord today. Timothy is with the Lord today. Titus is with the Lord today. But their bodies is still down here on the earth. Their resurrected, glorified body is not in heaven yet. Their spirit is. But see, their glorious appearing came when they closed their eyes in death. When they closed their eyes in death, they ended up getting this blessed hope that I'm referring to here that was made possible by that glorious appearing of that great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. It was Jesus himself that brought us that payment that we could receive that glorious hope as well, that we could have that blessed hope that the Bible is referring to here. But he goes on into verse 14. It says, who gave himself for us. Remember when Jesus went to the cross, he died on that cross. He endured the cross. He wore the thorns. He bled his body. He was whipped. He was beaten. He was brutalized in order for us to be able to have this verse here, who gave himself for us. Now, the us he's referring to is Titus and Paul. But who is he referring to today? If we know Jesus Christ as our Savior, because it said up there that great God and our Savior, are you able to say that he is your Savior today? That might be something that maybe you might want to consider is Jesus your Savior today? That is the question, because he says here, who gave himself for us, he gave himself for me. And I got great news for you. He gave himself for you when he went to that cross and he died on that cross, that he might redeem us. It's what it says right here, that he might redeem us. When you redeem something, you pay the full price for the redemption. And Jesus paid the absolute full price for the redemption, for the redemption of sin. He paid that full price. And then he says he will redeem us from all iniquity, not part. All iniquity, 
every bit of iniquity. He has paid the full price. He paid with his life when he went to Calvary's cross and he suffered and he died. And then it says, and purify unto himself. I use the story this morning about a nasty, filthy, dirty pair of jeans and how that when you put them clothes in the washing machine and you start letting it go through a washing process, you put soap in that water and that soap dissolves that dirt. And as that dirt is loosened up, it goes into the water and then as that thing gets through with its cycle, that that um, washing machine starts doing this number, and it starts spinning all that nasty water out. It's basically purifying the product by emptying and getting rid of the nasty water, and it's allowing them britches to get dried by pulling out that moisture, that moisture is leaving them jeans, and that dirt is leaving them jeans, and that dirt is going out the wastewater. And that's what he's talking here about purifying unto himself. You notice who is getting the benefit of us being purified unto himself a peculiar people. There's not a lot of people that is peculiar today. There's just not. There's not many people that can say that they're peculiar. Now, they're peculiar in their own way. They might even be weird in their own way. But they're not peculiar in the ways of God because it says here, That when you go through that purifying and that cleansing, then you get to be a peculiar people, zealous of good works. Now, a lot of people want to put their works before salvation. We think that good works is what God needs in order for, for him to save us. Let me tell you what actually saves us. It's not our works. Our works do follow the ones that are the peculiar people. We are supposed to have good works according to this, but your good works comes after the free gift of salvation. The free gift of salvation comes first. You accept the Lord with that that freedom of salvation, that gift that only Jesus can give. And then the works come in after that. Your works are not accounted as righteousness before you're saved. They're only accounted for righteousness after you saved. So the scripture I think I used this morning was in Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. The Bible says, um, let's see, it's talking about grace and I've got a mind freeze. Um, for by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. See, if we could boast on something that we did to earn heaven, it wouldn't be a gift. Jesus made it very clear that what he went to do was he paid the price And it was a free gift, and it's up to man to receive that free gift. And see, when salvation comes, it's a gift. And what works we have after is the works of the good works that he's referring to here. We never can put good works ahead of salvation. It doesn't work like that. So the bottom line is, in this whole verse... He says, looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. See, Paul's going to be got up out of that grave. 
Titus is going to be got up out of his grave. Timothy is going to be gotten up out of his grave. And anyone else that has died in the Lord, that died in salvation, God has given this promise of this blessed hope. And it's a promise to the people of God who believe in that blessed hope. It's not a hope-so hope. It's a no-so hope. The Bible says in Romans 3.23, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. It's what the Bible says. That's you and me. Romans chapter 5 and verse 8, the Bible said, God commendeth his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. See, he died before we was ever made righteous at all because we couldn't be righteous, not without him. Romans 6.23 says the wages of sin is death. You know, you and I would be in trouble had the Lord would have allowed him to put a period at the end of that word, but he didn't. He allowed Paul to keep on writing. He says, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. It was a gift. And see, he reemphasizes that gift. Romans 10 and verse 9, the Bible says that if thou, that's you, that's me. If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thy heart that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. That is a promise of that blessed hope that he was referring to up here in the book of Titus chapter 2, verse number 13 and 14. Thank God that he give us that blessed hope. And you have that blessed hope today if you have been born again. Remember I told you that you could know that you have been born again. The Bible says in 1 John 5 and 13, it says, These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that you have eternal life and that ye believe on the name of the Son of God. That's what the Bible says. You can know. I know where I'm sitting at today. I know what room I'm in today. I know I'm having to remake this video over again in order for it to be put on YouTube. In order for me to have this message in the archive, I've got to remake the video. You know what that's going to cause me to do? It's going to cause me not to want to do any more live feeds. Was it impressive to have a live feed? I don't know. I don't know the outcome. We don't know the outcome yet either of that place of that blessed hope. But we believe that the Lord made a promise for the ones that are saved and the ones that are born again. The question that you got to ask yourself today, have you been born again? Have you been born from above? That's what gives you salvation. That's what gives you this blessed hope. If you're out there today and you have never received that blessed hope, you just need to tell the Lord, Lord, I need you. I need you in my life. I need you to guide my life. I need you to be over my life. Help me to believe your word. Help me to trust in you. Help me to know who you are. Help me to give me that promise of that blessed hope that Paul was telling Titus here. I think that maybe he could have even used words like this to Timothy. But you know what? I believe he's also including you and I that are born again today. If you're born again and you're born from above, he's including you. He loves you enough to have went to the cross and die for you. He did it himself who gave himself for us. You can be considered as one of them us in this verse right here, that he might redeem us of all iniquity, not just part iniquity. He wants to redeem all iniquity. He wants to get rid of all iniquity. 
I hope that you let him get rid of the iniquity. I need to let him get rid of my iniquity. I have iniquity. There's things that I feel guilty about, and I wish that I could figure out a way that I can go to him and say, Lord, just take take that desire away. Just take it away. But you know what? Until I get serious, he's going to let me keep playing with that rattlesnake until it bites me. And all he's asking you to do is to trust in him, believe in him. That's what I'm going to have to do. Elderly Ministry is the website. You can go to that website. There's a phone number. You can call me. There's a cell phone number that you can call me. <clears throat> if you happen to not want to go on the, on the web, you can reach me on YouTube. Right there is my YouTube channel right there. You can go to YouTube and pull that up and be able to download. Uh, give me a call. There's email there. I've got testaments. I've got Bible tracts here. I got anything that you need. Let me know what you need and get back with me. Leave a message. Leave a message when you call. Make sure that you leave a message and I will return your call. Okay. Thank you for watching.